Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new propositions in regards to the idea of dark energy, but also connect all of this to the idea behind the cosmic web and the cosmic voids, the ideas that were recently proposed and explored in one of the recent studies you can find in the description below. But I think first it's kind of important for us to establish what the actual problem is. So when it comes to the universe, in modern cosmology, most of the things in the universe seem to be made out of unexplained stuff, either dark matter or dark energy. Dark matter is responsible for keeping things together and for making things a lot more massive than they should be otherwise. It's still not entirely certain what exactly is creating these effects, but some scientists believe it might be some kind of a particle, some scientists think that maybe it's some kind of a misinterpretation of certain formula, either way the effect is real and has been observed several times. But a much larger part of the universe is believed to be dark energy, over 70% in total. And this is a really poorly understood phenomenon, but it seems to cause the universe to not just expand, but to actually accelerate its expansion, making all the galaxies move faster and faster apart from one another. As a matter of fact, pretty much most of the galaxies out there are moving farther and farther away from us. And in one of the previous videos, I've even talked about the few galaxies that are moving toward us and the reasons why they're doing so. The majority of the galaxies out there are not just moving away, but they're actually accelerating away from us. And that's the dark energy in a nutshell. What's actually causing this though is another question. Not a question anyone can answer right now. But within the observable and measurable universe, and here we're talking about the actual matter that we're made from, the baryonic matter, there are also some mysteries here as well. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at the universe from far away, it would sort of resemble this. It would be made out of two main things, voids and what the scientists refer to as walls. With various walls being divided into further filaments, which are the branching arms of various walls, very often millions of light years across, and various clusters where a lot of galaxies and a lot of mass concentrates in large volumes. This is actually also where a lot of walls intersect. And it's actually these cosmic voids that's always been particularly fascinating because they basically look like empty space. With I guess Buddha's void and the local void being some of the most popular and most well-known ones. With the Buddha's void being particularly well-known but also the local void being the one that seems to influence us the most. As a matter of fact, the Milky Way galaxy is literally right at the edge of the local void. Although a quick side note, these voids are not really empty space, even though they might resemble empty space in this image. In reality, they actually represent just areas of much lesser density, usually about 10% of, for example, a typical cluster. You're still going to find dust, you're still going to find stars and even galaxies in these voids, but they're just not going to be as common. Nevertheless, they do represent the largest structures in the universe, sometimes having a diameter of up to 300 million light years across, with some of the smallest ones being about 30 million located in the vicinity of the Milky Way. And sometimes when these voids tend to lack any major clusters or superclusters in them, they're also referred to as the supervoids. But once again, they still have some stuff on the inside, just not as much. With the first voids being originally discovered back in 1978 by the scientists from the Kitt Peak National Observatory. And although naturally it's not entirely certain how they were formed, some of the clues about their formation come from the earliest light, the cosmic microwave background. Here, the tiny variations in density, formed by various early bubbles following the Big Bang, very likely caused the matter to collapse in a very certain way, eventually forming thicker and thicker structures and forming the web itself. Or in other words, even though initially all of the matter was relatively equally distributed, because of various small variations in density, eventually all of the matter started to coalesce into bigger and bigger structures forming what you see right here with many different supercomputer simulations being able to recreate some of this and essentially creating something similar to what we actually observe. So this cosmic web and of course the void between the different filaments of the web is something most scientists believe definitely exists, with several different studies we've discussed previously even finding actual evidence using various observations. But until this relatively recent paper, the idea of these cosmic voids and the idea of dark energy has never really been connected together, 
although the scientists behind this paper propose something relatively interesting. They propose an explanation for dark energy using these voids, and specifically using the interaction between these voids and the various walls I previously mentioned. So, first of all, when it comes to these voids, because they're mostly empty space, they should technically be affected more by this dark energy and by the expansion of the universe. A typical galaxy or any galactic clusters with a lot of mass should not really be feeling a lot of dark energy effects. In other words, in a typical galactic cluster, the effects from the dark energy are going to be almost invisible. However, in a typical void where the density is much lower and thus there is less mass, the effects should be much more pronounced. On top of this, the analysis today and all of the simulations determined that these voids very likely grew in time and very likely expanded to their current size over the last few billions of years. Something that kind of correlates to the appearance of dark energy. Today the scientists believe that the accelerated expansion of the universe very likely began approximately 5 billion years ago. And so there is a bit of a correlation between the size of these voids and the sudden acceleration of the universe. And so the scientists here propose that there might be a connection, and actually a direct connection. The voids might be pushing things apart. With the scientists behind this paper referring to this idea as a kind of a surface tension of cosmic voids, something that they present in this way. And so as these voids grow larger and larger in size, they actually end up putting a lot of pressure on the walls where the galaxies are located and kind of forcing them to thin out even more. And here, eventually, they might even rip them apart, which will most likely lead to the merger of all of these voids, resulting in even larger supervoids with time, but also dispersing a lot of the galaxies and all of the matter and destroying the cosmic web in the process. And because this is such an effective process, according to these scientists, it will actually take only a few billion years for all of these voids to completely dissolve the cosmic web eventually creating a bunch of galactic islands, very likely separated from each other by millions of light years, and very likely remaining isolated from everything else for billions of years afterwards, with the surface tension coming from these voids being created by a kind of a distortion of the space-time itself, with all this sort of being comparable to the effects you can kind of see if you have a bunch of bubbles on the surface of water. All of this pressure generated between the bubbles will eventually make some of them pop or possibly combine into larger bubbles. And the force that's causing all of this to happen can be actually described as a kind of a negative pressure, generated by all of the pressure from between these voids. And so as these bubbles push on each other, they force the galaxies to separate and to form smaller and smaller objects. But more intriguingly, when the scientists crunch the numbers here, their calculations suggested that it actually fits the models of the dark energy. Or more specifically, by adding all of the effects from all of these large voids, the surface tension calculations match the current estimates for dark energy. Now, at least they do to some extent. But because this is the first such proposition, and because this is a very big assumption right now, this will definitely require years and years of observations and analysis before it can be either confirmed or disproven completely. Nevertheless, this idea of negative pressure creating a kind of a surface tension right at the edges where all of the galaxies are located does actually make quite a lot of sense and would be super interesting to investigate in some of the future studies. More importantly, at the moment this is one of the better and more intriguing explanations for what dark energy could be to begin with. And in this case the scientists even proposed that to some extent this could even maybe explain some of the effects from dark matter as well, at least in smaller scales. And so definitely a super intriguing paper and something I'm looking forward to hearing more about in some of the future studies. But I guess until we have confirmation or potential disproval of this, well that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.